Hey class, happy Friday. Hope you're all staying safe, staying clean, um, staying away from coronavirus. I am outside enjoying this Friday afternoon. Uh, but before I go into the weekend, I want to share a what should be the beginning of some quick five minute clips breaking down the readings that I'm having you read. So our first reading for 15.1 natural selection and evidence for evolution. We're going to look at the cell. We've been spending a lot of time looking at the cell, and I want to connect the cell to what you are reading about evolution. Okay, what you're reading about Charles Darwin and embryos and fossils and horse hooves and bone structures. Okay, how how do cells, how do DNA, how do what we've been learning about for months and months before coronavirus hit us, how does that connect with evolution? Okay, and these are two essential questions, two objectives we uh, I want you to do this week, and we're going to focus right now on explaining how different types of evidence support evolution. All right, since this is the first video, I want to review homology, and in your reading it brought up homologous structures, but homology is a general evolutionary term that we think about when connecting all organisms. Okay, homology basically means all organisms have shared features between us and bacteria and mushrooms, um, between those plants behind me, the bird you hear, uh, the dog that's, I don't know where, where he is, he's looking at me from inside. Okay, we all have shared features, okay, and, and scientists say that these shared features show that organisms have some common ancestor, and we have been slowly changed, that, that common ancestor has been slowly changing into all the forms we have today. Now, um, let's take a quick look at when I say shared ancestor, what does that mean? So there is a website called OneZoom. It is an interactive tree of life, and I'll post this on Classroom. So we'll start at the base. No, let's, uh, let's start humans real fast. So i got to zoom in really far from this in this tree. I've lost myself on the tree. Let's zoom out. Get out of here. All right, there we go. Humans, humans, humans. Let's find this. We're kind of like bugs. Only a little bit. And this tree, it's neat. It shows you when different types of organisms evolved from each other. So at 570 million years ago, you have bilateral symmetry in animals. So that means that, you know, our one half is the same as the other half. So we have bilateral, bilateral symmetry. And we are vertebrates. We've got a backbone. So let's zoom in there. Right. Okay, we are ammonites. Talk, that's about our eggs, our eggs form. Mammals, rodents, primates, and more. Rodents are genetically, in terms of homology, very similar to us. Um, but primates, monkeys, and apes, that's us. I know this is kind of tedious and might be boring right now as I'm just watching me click in and zoom in. But um, we have a very diverse tree of life. And there we are. One single little leaf. Homo sapiens. There's no concern that we're going to die or go extinct. There's a lot of us. Billions, in fact. But our nearest ancestors, or our nearest relatives that share a very recent com common ancestor six million years ago. Bonobos and chimpanzees. They are endangered. So anyways, if you wanted to uh, examine this website, you're more than welcome to take a look. Find your favorite animal, favorite plant, and see how it's related. And as I zoom back out of this tree, and I... Oh, there's vertebrates. Each section tells you how many species there are. So, all right, holozoa. We're not even at the base yet. Okay, got to keep zooming out. All life. All right. All life, all organisms, 2,235,362. So, so far, we have found 2,235,362 species. That's a lot. I can't even count that high. All right. Now, uh, going back to our slideshow. Now, all 2 million plus species, what is some homology we have? Cells. We all have cells. 
looking at that tree, if you looked at every single one of those under the microscope, microscope you would see some type of cell. Now, looking in the cell, that's one type of homology, shared features, and we're, we're going to call it molecular homology. In the textbook, it was under a section called biochemistry. So, the cell gives us some pretty good evidence that we have been evolving and we come from a common ancestor. Hey, all two million species have cells. All two million species have a cytoplasm, have a cell membrane, have DNA, have ribosomes. Every single cell we look at. Scientists have been looking at these species under a microscope for hundreds of years and we always see these same five structures. Okay, and if I look at two different cell types, we've seen these pictures before, you've taken tests on it. Okay, in prokaryotes and bacteria, the nucleoid contains DNA, you have ribosomes that are used to make proteins and translation. Okay, you have a cell membrane in both. Okay, even if you're a plant cell and you have a cell wall, you still have a cell membrane. All right, and then there's a cytoplasm. There's all that cell space. Okay, so all that stuff we learned at the beginning of the year. That's actually, um, we were learning in one P, one evidence for evolution. Now, um, with, with those homologies, possible explanations, that the same structure evolved two million times. So there were two million separate events where uh, a bunch of chemicals got together and formed a cell membrane and DNA and ribosomes and a cytoplasm. Or that structure of all those structures came together one time and has slowly been modifying over the course of Earth's history, over billion, a billion plus years, into the 2,235,362 species we have today. Okay, so either one, all those structures happen to form the same exact way, two million plus times, or it happened one time and just has changed a bunch and made little changes, little alterations here and there, but overall the exact same. Okay, now um, some, some of the stuff we've learned that's also a molecular homology, central dogma, what we just took a test on, all of that stuff is evidence for evolution. When we learned how DNA turns into RNA and transcription, how RNA turns into an amino acid chain, a protein, at a ribosome during translation, that happens in every single cell. It is homology. It's showing us that there is a shared feature in all 2 million... 235,000 species okay another big molecular homology is just DNA and when we had to look and learn about the structure of DNA the ATs G's and C's the phosph sugar phosphate backbone it is the same in all 2,235,362 species okay now some cool stuff when we look at for DNA homology we can see which organisms are more related to each other, which organisms have a more recent ancestor by comparing DNA. Now, when we looked at the tree, chimps were pretty close to us. They share 98.8% DNA. So if you sequenced every single A, T, G, and C between us and chimps, you would have 98.8% of them be identical. But if you looked at mice, that number would still be really high. They're mammals, rodents. We're pretty close on that tree that we looked at on that website. 92%. Okay, and if you zoomed out even more and you looked at some organisms that don't have a backbone, that aren't even animals. Okay, we look at a fruit fly. They still have 60% of the same genes as us. Okay, banana is the same. It's about 60% of the same genes. Now, why do we have all the same DNA? Because at the end of the day, we're all using cells. We're all using the central dogma, using DNA to make RNA, to make protein. So all of those basic functions are controlled by some of the same genes or similar genes in all life, Okay, giving us evidence that at one point there could have been a common ancestor. Okay, And again, going back to those two possible explanations, when we see all of these cell similarities that is giving us evidence of this right explanation that the same structure evolved one time and got modified a bunch of times versus okay connecting transcription and translation together two million times that is crazy it's possible but it's more likely that it just evolved one time
and it's been kind of changing and altering just a little bit over the course of history. Okay, so to summarize it in conclusion for this video, all right, all organisms on Earth share common cell structures. That's homology. Okay, all organisms use DNA to make RNA and transcription. Another piece of evidence for evolution, homology, shared similarities. Okay, another thing, all organisms use RNA to make amino acids, our, our central dogma. Okay, and one explanation we have from that, looking at our evidence, the claim we would make, cell structures were developed one time and they've been modified over time. All right. I hope this video helps you if you needed help understanding the biochemistry section. Okay, stay tuned as more videos come out. All right, I've gone over my five minute link, my five minute uh, by five minutes. I'm at 11 minutes, um, so I'm going to stop talking. Have a good weekend.